Hey everyone, my name is Trent Kelly and this is my first attempt at D209 data mining one task two. And since it's going to take a while, we're going to go and restart the kernel and run all code. All right, so to start out table of contents, uh, we're going to describe the purpose of this data mining report, define one goal of the data analysis, and explain the reasons for your chosen classification method, perform data preparation of the chosen data, perform the data analysis and report on the results, and summarize your data analysis. And uh, so starting out um, with proposing one question relevant to a real world organizational situation, uh, that question that I propose is, can our model accurately predict patients with high blood pressure using a random forest predict, uh, prediction method? And in this cell, I just defined what the different models consist of. And so with the random forests, it's very similar to decision tree regression. And basically it's a meta for decision trees. So it takes, from my understanding, takes several different, uh, several decision trees and puts them all together, all together creating uh, this meta estimator. And uh, so fits a number of decision trees on various subsamples of the data and uses averaging to improve the predictive accuracy and uh, attempt to control overfitting. And um, reducing overfitting and decision tree and improve the accuracy, it also works well with both categorical and continuous values, requires much, comp uh, requires much computational power and resources as it fits a number of decision trees to combine their outputs. Uh, my goal is to, uh, my analysis aims to determine if we can build a decision tree model that accurately predicts patients with high blood pressure, explain how the classification you chose uh, analyzes the selected data set. And so I selected random for us because it's um, capability of utilizing a categorical um, Y variable, response variable specifically. And uh, since our response variable is categorical, uh, we must either use a random forest or decision tree as um, the lasso and ridge require numerical um, response variables. And, um, and I further selected the random forest for its potential for higher accuracy and uh, adds reductions to overfitting that it is a decision tree may be prone to. My expected outcome is I expect to create a model that accurately predicts individuals with high blood pressure with at least 95% accuracy without over underfitting. And here is the assumption. So the assumption is the random forest uses bootstrap aggregation and it assumes that sampling a uh, assumes that sampling is representative, which is also an assumption of decision tree on which the random forest is built. and method justification for our libraries, uh, data preparation. So this is a pre-processing goal. And so since pre-processing is kind of an overarching um, process, I included the process uh, processes that I would use. So data cleaning, renaming, looking for duplicates, et cetera, one hot coding with categorical variables, standardization of the data. Technically did not need to do this, uh, but we did it with KNN, and it's crucial with KNN because uh, KNN uses distance, whereas uh, random forest is not going to factor in distance between data points. However, I included this because when I was checking uh, the two with and without standardized data, the multicollinearity between the two, I had higher multicollinearity with the non standardized data, which makes sense. So I just left it in as standardized and bootstrap aggregation random forests use bootstrap samples to build individual trees which in introduce variation and decorrelation in the data this averaging process mitigates the data for future scaling uh, feature randomness for each split of a tree only random subsets of features are considered this prevents any feature from weighing too heavily on the data splits i want to come back to feature randomness and feature scaling 
um, identify the initial data set variables. So these would be variables that I selected, my process, uh, library importation, and CSV importation. We're using the medical raw uh, data set. And went all of the over this in task one, uh, looking at the head of the data, looking at um, data types and counts and nulls and renaming columns consistent with the data dictionary using forward fill to take care of uh, nulls, changing a, a null response in soft drink to no, and uh, replacing uh, 0.709 with a one in the overweight column, uh, taking high uh, high blood pressure changing the yes to a one and a no to a zero to make it binary for later later model use and then just printing the new data frame verifying that um, the nulls and um, have been corrected and since we've corrected nulls i wanted to uh, change the data types so this is changing the data types to integers that i felt were appropriate looking at the, the nulls and soft drink that we fixed, renaming associates degree, master's and bachelor's degree uh, for the one hot encoding process, standardizing the data. And here's the one hot encoding for the categorical variables and then combining the categorical with numerical uh, columns and including it and making it a new data frame, uh, DF underscore regression, looking at the head of that and looking how the overall information of that data frame looks so making sure that we have consistency with data types no nulls and um so as i discussed in task one i went through or went down kind of rabbit hole with outliers so this is just me evaluating outliers which i discussed in detail task one and uh, visualizing the data and plotting it out which is also detailed in task one. All right. Um, so here is a heat map. Um, so heat maps are typically used for numerical um, data types. And what this heat map is showing us is a variable correlation. So it's just showing a positive correlation between variables. Now, this may not have anything to do with the influence on the the target variable that we're looking at it just shows uh, that there's a potential correlation between total charge and vitamin d levels at zero uh, with 0 0.73 it's normal to have a diagonal ones in red across like that and so this is doing our feature selection which again we will come back to so this just tells us that these four features have a p-value of less than 0 0.05, which will help us with multicollinearity. Printing the data set um, and then viewing our multicollinearity score with the feature selection, doing our X-train and Y-train splits, looking, uh, looking at them, the shapes, uh, printing these out to CSV files. Uh, describe the analysis technique used to appropriately analyze the data. Uh, so as discussed before, uh, random forests are just an ensemble learning method uh, for regression problems. So it just takes um, several trees. So these instances and the trees down here, it takes several of these to look at um, and provide uh, predictions for regression. And with this algorithm, conducted hyperparameter tuning through grid search and test train split ratios, uh, determine the following measurements, um, max depth, max features, and the amount of trees present in estimators, which is that one. Um, best parameters is a combination of hyperparameters that resulted in the optimal performance during the tuning process. Uh, the model had a depth of none, two features, used 10 trees, 
um, the tuning metrics will typically provide the best offset between bias and variance. And here are the metrics that we came up with that we'll go in further detail later. We'll come back to no overfitting the model. And um, so here is the best parameters that we highlighted above. So this is using grid search and instantiating. This is an object, the random forest regressor is an object. Uh, we use score, um, our cross validation. And just for time's sake, I just reduced it to three, but you could change that out for more, more cross validation if you'd like. I didn't see a difference between three and 10. So I just left it at three for computational efficiency. And so I pulled this from this book, which is a really good book. Um, and so this allows me to look at what um, the hyperparameterization is doing and all the different kind of scenarios it runs through. And I just found it fascinating that I can see that, you know, the one it went with is, you know, uh, the rank test score one, but you can look through these and see what it's doing, which I found fascinating. Uh, so here are the metrics we got for MSE, RMSE, and R squared. And our um, feature importance, so additional charges underscore Z, the standardized additional charges is a glaring importance or apparent importance. And we'll come back to these in explanations. Uh, explain the accuracy and the mean squared error of your prediction. Uh, so here is the algorithm itself. And so the MSC is basically the square difference between the predicted or dependent values and the actual target dependent values and is used to evaluate the performance of a regression model. And what we came up with with the MSC, so training is 0 0.167 and the test is 0 0.168. So we're looking at, we're looking for small values ideally. And we want these to be similar because we don't want a discrepancy between our training and test data that would indicate there's that the model is not learning correctly. If we had a, a low score or a high score on tests and a low score on training. Uh, the R squared, um, so uh, R squared, this metric measures the relationship between the residual sum of squares and the total sum of squares. Um, and it, it basically just tells us how well a model fits the data and it ranges from zero to one, the higher the square, uh, the better, better the model fits the data. And our model is showing originally a training of 0 0.869 and a test 0 0.3. That's a problem. This indicates that we have a good fit for our training data, but a poor fit for our test data. Possible explanation for, the, for that is uh, not tolerating noise, uh, over or underfitting issues. Discuss the results and implications of your classification analysis. When looking at the MSE, uh, we have low numbers, but they're very close to one another. So that indicates that we have a good performance of the model. However, originally uh, we had these low R squared values, which indicate that um, we have a, the, the model has a hard time providing positive correlative relationships between the variables, but there's also a discrepancy between the training versus test R squared values. And so that told me something was happening. And I wasn't seeing it in MSE or RMSE or anything else. It was just in the R squared. Uh, limitations of the data. So this is the same with task one. Um, so there is a disparity between the amount of data between yes and no high blood pressure. I would like to see this um, to be the same. So we have equal data to pull from. And also for transparency, I would like to know um, how the data was collected so we can include or exclude that as part of rationale and reasoning for evaluating our model. Um, recommend a course of action. Uh, so we may have some overfitting, underfitting, or bias occurring with the uh, random forest algorithm. Uh, recommendation would be try other hyperparameters, uh, experiments, uh, maybe with different algorithms to see if we can reduce the possible overfitting or underfitting or bias. 
So in saying that, I was going to conclude it there. However, when thinking about it overnight and the R squared, I wanted, I went back through everything and then I realized that one of my problems is that I did feature selection, which wasn't needed because of what this algorithm does. So you do not need to do feature selection necessarily. So I went back through and changed that. And so this is what the feature selection would have consisted of, but I left the data frame as is. Um, so we're still pulling all of our X variables from DF underscore regression, and we're not selecting them down to this and retraining, resplitting, and rerunning our hyperparameters and cross validation. And it has changed. So the big biggest thing is a max depth changed to eight. It remained as features two and trees 10. And here's rerunning all of the accuracy scores. And um, but we did have some changes and then our feature importance the additional charges is still glaringly, you know, more important, but we can at least visualize the other ones uh, to scale and where these weren't present in the original feature importance plot. So the, the biggest difference that I want to point out is that we were able to get our R squared values to a similar parameter. Um, and so because of, it's still low, which you want to see these higher, you want to see these closer to one, ideally, they're still low. So the model is still poor at providing correlated relationships between variables. However, I at least got these to be similar. So I can provide a similar deduction on the capability of our model, which is it's not good. Um, and the MSE metrics, they stayed low, uh, which indicates that it's a good fit, but the R squared score value is, is still low. Um, so here is a comparison between the data we got with the previous model and the um, trying to reduce the overfitting concern. And like I said, we did have some changes. Um, our MSE did increase slightly. Um, our MSE increased slightly. But the biggest one that I was just happy with is that's the, um, the testing R squared score. Uh, is now similar to the training score. So now that we've got a new model, um, we're still kind of in a similar boat because that still could mean that we have overfitting uh, or biases with the model. So I would still recommend experimenting with these, these selected variables, see if we can reduce that in the data noise, um, or just expect um, experiment with different models to see if we can get higher correlative power and a more useful model. So that concludes my presentation and I appreciate your time.